thing that I was hoping for that weekend is very useless.
And mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Here on today, for the homegoing celebration of one sister, Clara Mae Davenport. Uh, my name is Reverend Ronald Scott, and I'll be doing the Old Testament and New Testament scripture reading this morning, or this afternoon. The Old Testament reading will come from the 23rd number of Psalms, and it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, 
I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That was the Old Testament reading of the 23rd number of Psalms. The New Testament reading will come from John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. And it reads thus, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now we will have a moment of prayer. May you close your eyes and bow your head, please. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we're here today. We're so grateful and thankful, Father, to be under your covering, Father. For without you, Lord God, where would we be? Father, you are a great God. You are amazing in all of your work, Father. Nothing that is done or can be done that goes off of your radar, Father, for you know every moment, Father, in this moment right here, you know. In fact, Lord God, you foreknew it before we did, Lord God, Father, and you allowed it, Father. Father, for us here and the family here that remain, Lord God, we pray for an extra measure of your strength, Lord. Oh, Lord, strengthen us, O God, in all the places, Lord God, in which you see that we need. For, Father, there are some secret places, Lord God, that we need an extra measure of your healing, Lord God. We need, we need an extra measure of your comfort, Father God. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord, to navigate these paths, oh God, these roadways, these purposes, Father, without our dearly beloved, Father God. Oh, Lord, you said in your word that you would be a mother for us, Lord God. You said that you can even be a father, Lord God. You stick closer to us than any friend, Lord God. So, Father, help us, O oh Lord. Be with us, Lord God. You sent your Holy Spirit here to comfort us, Lord. Father, in these very moments, we need that type of comfort, Lord God. We pray on today, Lord God, that any who feels a void, O oh Lord, that feels a, a pulling away, O oh Lord, or a, a missing place, Lord God, we pray that your Spirit will be there, Lord God, to provide that type of comfort that each of us need in this hour. Father, strengthen us today, Lord God, and help us to move forward and to press toward the mark that you have set for us. We know that we can't get there without you. So, Lord, minister unto us in only ways that you know how. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We glorify your name, Lord. For this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are my strength. Strength like no other Strength like no other Retest me You are my peace Peace like no Oh 
At this time, we will have expressions by Sister Laverne Williams and Brother Stefan Pierre. Following expressions, we'll have a solo by Sister Sheila Douglas. Following our solo, we'll have acknowledgments by Sister Leslie Sparn. Please come in that order. my obedience to God, who is my life, <clears throat> to Pastor Smith and all of the clergy in your respective places, and to my family. I bring you greetings from Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Willis E. Barnes, who is our pastor, Veronica, Lily, the Queen Empress, and myself. I need you all to know that this is the second hardest thing I've had to do with my life. So please bear with me today. I would not let my sister get her wings and I not say something. I tried to write something down. When I got the call at 502 last Saturday morning, I picked up this book and I started to write. And I wrote in this book the entire week. This morning at 7 o'clock, I woke up and I said, I have to write it down. I cannot stand here and just say it because you all would be here all afternoon. So I don't want to keep you, but I do want to share some things with you about the Queen Empress. She was my sister. I have seven sisters, but she's my eighth sister, but she's my bestest sister. I have a best friend, but I have a bestest friend. And that would be the Queen Empress. She's my ride or die. She's my best of the best. There's so much that, that I can share with you about the dynamic duo. That's who we are. Uh, you might say we might be Wilona in Florida, Laverne and Shirley, Alice and Charlotte, but we were them and Louise. Now, to share the life of this dynamic duo, I would have to share the good, the bad, and the ugly. I told my sister, I said, some things we're supposed to die with. So she's taking some of my secrets with her, but we're going to sit down and share those secrets later. Now, I don't want to bore you at this time, so I'm going to share with you. Yes, the Queen Empress is my best friend. And... I, I was thinking last week, I don't you know, there's some things that I just can't get past without her. I was the one who was always keeping everybody straight, and she was the one saying, sister, it's okay, don't worry about it, sister, don't worry. And she always had this thing, whenever she finished saying what she had to say, she would say, and stuff like that. <laughs> or she would say, and that. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't even know how I'm going to get past not having my sister. And that right there. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I, I know when, uh, and you know I have some secrets about everybody sitting there. I'm telling y'all right now. I'm telling you, I know all the secrets. And she knows all of mine. So I'm not going to read all of this, but I've never, I've only seen my sister cry twice. I'm the waterhead of the dynamic duo. I remember she cried when Alton became engineer of the year. And we were so excited. And I remember us crying together when Rhoda passed. 
Um, I can only remember certain things about the queen that just, you know how you just, almost like you can't get past some stuff. And I know God is going to see me through this. Absolutely. But it is so hard. And nobody knew God better than that woman right there. I was the one invited her to church. Two Sundays later, she joined the church. And we've been in the same church for the last almost 30 years. We kept our friendship tight, and we figured that we'll get through this. My daughter, who stands next to me and Veronica, went to school and graduated from the same university. They had a knockdown drag out at the university. And what did Claire and I do? We said, they'll get over it. And guess what? They did. <laughs> Claire and I never fell out. I've never seen her angry. Now, she, she would say whenever she called me Laverne, I know something's coming, but she would say, sister, sister, don't worry about it. But Claire and I never got off the phone without saying, I love you or I love you too. It just depends on which one of us said it first. And so I want y'all to know I have six grandkids and those were Claire's grandkids. And they play football, and the things we shared was faith, family, and football. Mm -hmm. And what we shared, we both, the former quarterback of the Patriots, I'm telling this sister, <laughs> the former quarterback of the Patriots and the new quarterback of the Bucks, we shared the disdain for him together. But the Saints, we would get dressed up every time the Saints played. Put on our jewelry, our sweatshirts, and get our cups, and sing and who that, and when Breeze would mess up, huh? If I wasn't with her, my phone would ring. She would say, sister, excuse me, Pastor, what the hell is Breeze doing? What the hell, he just threw an interception. And I'd be like, oh, Lord, sister, I don't know. I said, but you know we're a third, fourth quarter team, sister. Hold on, hold on. But, um, uh, I'm just, I'm just, it's so much I can say, but what I want my family to know is that I'm here. It's going to take me a while, but I'm here. Lily, I'm your new nana. Yeah. I'm your new nana. Your mom. Y'all, I, I, I just want you to know that. God doesn't make mistakes. And I thank you for listening to me and putting up with me. Queen Empress, I need you to know that your nephew, you used to tell him kick butt and take names. And I want you to know as a freshman on his high school at the banquet Friday night, he was freshman of the year playing starting on the varsity team. And that's because partly of you. And I know I'm going to see you again. So rest well. I love you. But I know you're telling me I love you too. Thank you. Thank you. told me a couple times this week, she said, you know, you're on the program. You're on the program. And I was like, okay. So I'm telling you all right now, I didn't know what I was going to say. But I just thought about it when Sister Williams was talking. I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> so when, when, I, when I married into this family, I got, you know, I got notified quickly of two things. <laughs> My wife said, I got a brother-in-law that live in Oklahoma and a sister that live in Florida. And wherever I'm at, during the holidays, that's where they at. I said, okay. So it'll be 20 years this year that Val and I have been married. So my sister-in-law, I never called her Clara. 
She called me brother-in-law. I called her sister-in-law. Let me tell y'all one of the most precious memories I have of my sister-in-law. A lot of people don't know this. But it had to be when it was cold. People know I play golf. My wife say every day, that's not true. I try to play every day, sometimes the weather prevents it. And sometimes it works. But it must have been raining and cold. And my sister-in-law and I, we probably watched four movies up in the theater room. Four consecutive movies. That's one of the four. That's one of the most precious memories that I have about my sister-in-law. So the biggest thing I wanted to share with y'all, the thing, and Sister William said it already. I was thinking what I was going to say. The biggest thing that I think about Clara is love. <laughs> I was thinking in 20 years, legitimately. Now she might have said, she might have raised her voice a little bit when Veronica and didn't do something she wanted to do. Said, Veronica, why don't you go ahead do that? But other than that, I have never seen her really angry. Ever, ever, always smiling, always positive. So what I want to tell my family, we we'll start with Alton. You know, last Saturday, I told y'all this. I was going to the barber shop, don't laugh. Yeah, I get my hair cut, my hair grow. And I called my wife. I cried all the way. Oh, to the barber shop. And I was thinking, I won't see my sister in law come. Because believe it or not, you know your family, you love to see them come, you love to see them go. Everybody can say that, right? I ain't the only one to say oh, that. Yeah. 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 But you love both ways, right? <laughs> so I was just thinking, I never see my sister in law come, stay with us again. And that bothers me. But to Alton, I want to tell him, man, I know as a man, dude, you stood by your mama. Amen. So, man, you, you can raise your head up high. And just be proud, brother. That's what I wanted to tell you. I told I told Beth the other day, Veronica, your mom has instilled a lot of good stuff in you. What I told you the other day, I said, Lily, is that you? <laughs> that young lady, since the last time I saw her, has grown and matured. That doesn't happen without some womanly quality that she's seen and she's adopting. So, Veronica, your mom has instilled a lot of stuff in you. So y'all just continue to love each other. And one thing I love about this family, my family, and I, I didn't understand it when I first joined this family, but glad it was me to me when she first I'm going to tell y'all what she said, because it's almost a church. <laughs> but I know there's a lot of love, so I'll just tell y'all, just, just don't be afraid to cry. I was telling one of my colleagues who lost his mom last month, she said, man, I, I thought I was going to get over this because we men, right? She said, I had figured out in two years I'm going to get over it. And in a month, don't even figure it out, it's going to take longer than that. And guess what I told her? You never get over it. You know, cry. I cry. You know what I cry the most? When I'm thinking about positive things and great memories with my mom. Man, I might just break out and just cry for about 10 minutes. But that's okay. I just want to tell y'all I love y'all. I appreciate y'all thinking enough of me to ask me to do some expression. And God bless you. Well, my name is not on the program because I didn't think I was going to be strong enough. But Stefan, of course, you know, uh, shed some tears. Uh, my sister-in-law, Audrey, uh, told me yesterday okay we get it together she said I know you're gonna say something we've lost two brothers and I got up and spoke at both of them slowly for those of you all that don't know, I am the youngest, but sometimes, dear God, they act like I'm the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I think so because Gladys tell me often, she said, Val, you mean. I'm not mean. I just like to get things done and done right, and I can vouch for a lot of things. I'll be up here all day, but what I am going to say if you all are not close to your family, please, please get close. 
And as Stephon said earlier, when I first met him, my words were, was, we have um, a celebration where we get together every year for Christmas. We've been doing it for, I was pregnant, my son is, would be 37 years this year, so we've been doing it for that long. And the thing is that we get together, and it's not about gifts, what you're gonna buy, what you're gonna do. It was about us getting together as a family, just loving on each other, plenty of food. And when I tell you, we look forward to it every year. And my thing that I look forward to, I knew my sister and her family was gonna come to that door every year for Christmas. Every year they will be there. Alton Veronica grew up in the house with me like they were my kids during the holidays. I would be so happy to see him. I'll be in the kitchen. Veronica coming in, help me. Alton would be there. I mean, it was just, it's, it's just something that I could just go on and on and say, I'm gonna miss my sister. But I told Alton and Veronica, we're here for you. I can't take the place of their mother. I can only express that I'm here. My doors will always be open for Alton, Veronica, and Lily to be there. Even after I'm gone, my doors will still be open because I'm told my step, Stefan will welcome you all still. As for my brother that traveled here from Oklahoma, him and his wife, and the family that people that came from Florida, I was here last night, I met some of Clara's friends, my sister touched a lot of people's lives. And the only thing I have to say today is that I love everyone. I try to stay strong. You did well. But the strong break sometimes. Well, you did well. As you all may not know, I have a brother that's ill, Carrie. It took a lot for him to get be here. He's been in and out of MD Anderson since August. And my prayers for him is for him to stay strong. For his wife and his kids to stay strong. Because they've been with their daddy 100% of the way. You have to take care of your parents. You have to. You have to. I'm going to take my seat. This is my oldest sister right here. Maybe she'll step up to the plate. <laughs> I can say this about my sister. Every other mother, so she's in the Gladys. I'm running out of red beans. So <laughs> <laughs> she can say, Lily like red beans every Monday. I cook red beans. So you make sure you ship me some red beans and sausage. And just for Christmas, she called me a couple of weeks for Christmas, before Christmas. She told me, Veronica's gonna cook, she gonna make gumbo. She got all Louisiana recipes. She said, we're not gonna be there, but we're gonna eat like it in Louisiana. <laughs> That's right. And she burned my phone up about the gumbo, telling Veronica how to make the gumbo. So Christmas Day, I talked to her, I said, look at Mook. Y'all, um, a lot of y'all may not know that, so we call her, because my Uncle Fox gave her the nickname. I said, how did your gumbo taste? Oh, it was good, sister. It was good. And like Laverne said, it never was a time that we talked that we didn't tell each other at the end of the conversation yeah, we how love we love each other. Amen. And I'm going to truly miss my Amen. sister. We would sit on, I live in the country, we would sit on the front porch in the mornings and drink our coffee and reminisce about old times. So I'm gonna miss her sister. Sleep on, sister. We'll see you soon.
I asked God before I drew, got here, driving from Port Allen, for him to use me and let him have his way. And for him to decrease, increase in me, and for me to decrease. So before I go on to the task that I was assigned, I just feel I have to say something to the, the family that I consider my family. Uh, my name is Leslie Smart Ferguson from Port Allen. I was introduced to the family through Howard Bushrod, because Bushrod was married to my first cousin, Connie. And out of that marriage came my beautiful cousin, Chandra. Me and Val have been knowing each other for many years through Connie and Howard. But what I want to say is that Howard and Connie took me on my first trip to Florida. And I met Clara May. We went to, we went to Disney World, but we went to see Clara May too. <laughs> Clara May told us everything what we was going to expect, me and Monica. Before we got to Disney World, we knew which way to go and everything, because she had gave us the map for everything. And I just never, ever forget that. Me and Howard shares the same birthday. Every year, we talk to each other. I call and check on Howard, because Howard is always going to be my cousin-in-law, OK? Tyrone, I always ask about Tyrone. I always ask about Val. When I talk to Val, me and Val call each other Roller, because we work together at the credit union. And I always knew when we worked together, coming around the holiday time, what was going down for our lunch break. We already knew we had to go to the grocery store, and we would go and start on the lunch break, and she'll end up back at night, because we knew Clara May, Veronica, and Alton was coming. From O'Leary to the new address, they was coming for the holidays. So I just want to tell you all, Veronica and Alton, you all, mom, y'all mom had a wonderful spirit. Um, last night I spent some time up with, at Gladys, and I had them laughing about, I, we couldn't remember what we were here for, but we realized it was Veronica. I was here from Atlanta to help with Veronica and Karen's graduation party. We was at Val's house, and Clara May kept saying, I didn't know it was all this to get an event done. Y'all have to do all this. So as we went to pack the car, she never moved. She said in one spot, and she kept saying, Y'all got to get that. Y'all forgot that. Come on back and get that. It was so funny because she was so amazed that all the details went to putting an event together. So Clara May, I love you, and I'm going to miss you. And you all just remember the good memories of Clara May. Think about all the good times. And I just have one question and one person I want to formally introduce myself to because I've heard so much about that person because she loved him dearly. Ricky Davenport, where are you? <laughs> Never met Ricky Davenport, but I always heard of Ricky Davenport. And it's an honor to finally get a chance to see you. A celebration of life. Clara Mae Davenport. January 23rd, 2021, Hall Davis and Son Funeral Service. Sunrise, August 11, 1957, to sunset, January 16, 2021. Clara May Davenport, for I am not now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there are laid upon me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8. Our beloved Clara Mae Davenport was born on August the 11th, 1957, to Clarence Edward White and Rhoda Peyton Burks of St. Francisville, Louisiana. She began her Christian journey and was baptized at an early age by the late Reverend Lionel Lee. Clara relocated to Orlando, Florida, and she became a faithful member of the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church of Eatonville, Florida. She served, she served in the women's ministry 
and ministered to fellow members who were sick in the hospital and shut in at home. Her ministry was always a weekly visit after her noonday service at church. She was known for visiting and caring for family, friends, church members, and who were sick and shut in, who was sick and shut in the need and needed a, a smile or a kind word, words of encouragement. She was under the leadership of Pastor Willie C. Barnes until she accepted God calling for her presence in heaven. Clara was a native of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and attended Baker High School in Baker, Louisiana. She later attended Delta, Delta School of Business, where she earned her certificate and an office, as an office specialist. She worked at the Advocate, formerly the Morning Advocate, John Deere, Eckert's Drug, CVS Pharmacy, as a data entry specialist until she retired in 2008. She married the love of her life on July the 11th, 1978, Ricky Wayne Davenport. And to this union, two children were born. Family meant everything to her. She devoted her entire life to the upbringing of her children. She opened her home to people in need and was a mother to many others. She enjoyed celebrating holidays with her family and coming back home to Baton Rouge. One of her greatest joys was becoming a grandmother. Leaving to cherish her legacy are her son, Alton Davenport of Orlando, Florida, and daughter Veronica Davenport of Orlando, Florida. A granddaughter, Lily Odor Davenport of Orlando, Florida. She is survived by two sisters, Gladys Ruffins of St. Francisville, Louisiana, and Valerie Pierre and Stefan of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Three brothers, Carrie Burks and Audrey of St. Francisville, Louisiana, Howard Burks of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Tyrone White and Valerie of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. One goddaughter, Ashley Worthy of Houston, Texas, a, Houston, a host of nieces, nephews, friends, Tara Burton, Deanna Gildry, Amanda Coleman, Keller, Judy Robinson, and Laverne Williams, her BFF and other relatives. Preceded in death by her parents, Clara, Clarence Edwards White Sr. and Rhoda Peyton Burks. Grandparents, Reverend Esco Peyton and Lily Y. Peyton. Avin White Sr. and Rosetta Berry White. Brothers, Lania Burks and Clarence E. White Jr. Trust in the law with all thy heart and lean unto, not unto thy under, own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I am always with you. I am always with you when I am gone. Release me let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You mustn't tie yourself to me with too many tears. But be thankful we had so many good years. I gave you my love, and you can only guess how much you've given me in happiness. I thank you for this love, for the love that you have shown. But now it's time I travel on alone. So grieve for me a while, if grieve you must. Then let your grief be comforted by trust. That is, on, is, that is only for a while that we must part. So treasure the memories within your heart. I won't be far away for life goes on. And if you need me, call and I will come. Though you can't see or touch me, I will be near. And if you listen with your heart, you will hear. All my love around you, soft and close. And then when you come this way alone, I greet you with a smile and a welcome home. Acknowledgements and gratitude. The family of Queen Clara May Davenport Beloved mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, and friend, 
wish to convey our sincere thanks to you for your kind expressions and sympathy in our recent sorrow. May God continue to bless each of you. We sincerely ask for your continued for you to continue to keep us in your prayer. We have several cards and the family has chosen some cards that they want me to read. Her laugh, her smile, her spirit. In every memory, hope you still feel your mother's loving presence in the most comfort way. I love you always. Praise T. Vale and Uncle Stefan. Love you, Veronica and Alton. Wishing you comfort in the loss of your mother. The heart aches for what it has loved, for it has loved and lost. Gently wrap yourself in the warm memories of your mother. Let the love that held you close continue to bring you strength and comfort. With sympathy, and we love you, Kevin, Ashley, Jordan, Trey, Legend, Nasir, we love you, Veronica and Alton. A soul has been called home to endless love, matchless peace, and the radiant light of heaven. Hope I will give you peace to know your loved one will walk with, father, with the Father and sit at his side forever. Our family will miss our sister. To Alton and Veronica, from Kerry, Howard, Tyrone, Val, and Gladys. We will miss our sister always, and we love her dearly. In God we trust always, Phoebe and Trina. Our thoughts and prayers is with you during this difficult time. Ashley, Rochelle, Martha, Mitchell, Candice, Alston, and, the, and Teresa Elliott, Tallahassee, Florida. With deepest sympathy, Pastor Burns and the Macedonia Baptist Church family. With deepest sympathy, family, friends, forever, Diane and Diera, Diana and Diara. With deepest sympathy, Joyce and David Raleigh. With sincere sympathy from the family, friends, and co-workers at Lockhart Martin. We love you and pray and praying for you every day. Monique, Dennis, and the kids. With deepest sympathy, Pastor Mark Ellis and the UCFM family. Praying for your strength and comfort during the difficult time. We love you your circle of friends. With deepest sympathy from your friends and family, Valerie, Neighbors Federal Credit Union. Our hearts and prayers are with you always, Oliver and April Sims. We also have two resolutions. Resolution, January 23rd, 2021. And God shall wipe all the tears from their eyes, and there should be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation 21 and 4. Whereas God, in his infinity wisdom, has visited among us in death. Clara Davenport, we want the family to know that our hearts are saddened by the transition of your dear loved one. Clara was one of our deepest and sweetest and kindest members at Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. Her love for God amplified her strength and beauty and reflects in Veronica and Lily. We thank God for the privileges of knowing Sister Clara. Whereas Clara Davenport has yielded to an appointment that no one can resist. We know that the entire family and friends who love her and share memorable moments of her life will truly miss her. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Resolve that the pastors and deacons of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church 
join every member in exchanging our deepest sympathy to the Davenport family and commend them to the Heavenly Father who is to wish to make mistake of two just for error. Resolve lastly that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy placed in our church records. Respectfully submitted by Reverend William C. Barnes, pastor of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. Second resolution is from Greater Mount Carmel Baptist Church of Scotlandville. Resolution and respect for Sister Clara May Davenport, niece of Sister Ruby P. Richardson. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Revelations 2 and 10. How sweet it is at evening after a long and well-spent day to close the eyes in slumber and rest from the toll of the day. It is double sweet at the close of well-spent time and well-spent life to turn one's face toward the sunset and quickly sink in that rest that knows no walking except in the presence of God. Where it is has been the will of God in his removal from the presence of the beautiful life of Sister Clara May Davenport. We, the officers and members of the Greater Mount Carmel Baptist Church of Scotlandville, extend to the family our sincere and deepest sympathy during the time of sorrow. And where is she has gone to be with the Heavenly Father to receive the promise of God as stated in John 14 and 2. In my Father's house of many mansions, if we were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that's where you may also. Where Sister Clara May Davenport, passing in not easy to accept. Let the family know that death is not the end. It's only the beginning of a better life. Although she has left this earthly body, her spirit is gone to a better place. She is now moving in a new home where she can rest. Be at peace and safe in the arms of Jesus Christ the Savior. Resolve that the pastor, officers, and members of the Greater Mount Karma Missionary, Mount Karma Baptist Church of Scotlandville, bow in humble obedience to the will of the Almighty God and command Sister Clara May Davenport and the entire bereavement family to him who does all things well, for he will mend and comfort your broken hearts. Resolve, Father, that a copy of this resolution to be placed in the church records and a copy presented to the family, done this 23rd day of January in the year of the Lord, 2021, in the city of Baton Rouge, parish of East Baton Rouge, state of Louisiana, and having caused the seal to be thus annexed, humbly and sorrowfully submitted. Elder and pa Ernest Low Pastor. So on behalf of the family, we would like to thank everyone for the cards, words of comfort, and the program will go on as announced. Amen. 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 At this time, we will have words of comfort by uh, Sister Valerie White. Following our words of comfort, we will have the eulogy by Pastor Jerome Smith. cometh my help, my help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. First, I want to give obedience to God, who is the great head of my life, and to his darling son, Jesus, that died out on my Calvary, that you and I might have a right to the tree of life, and to the Holy Spirit that leads and guides me to all truth, to Pastor Jerome and the other minister, and to my family. 
you know, in Oklahoma City, we say family and love. So I always call my in-laws because I was married to, I'm married to the youngest son, the youngest brother, Tyrone White. Uh, we've been together for 33 years. So I've been in the family for 33 years. And so, um, you know, when I was uh, asked to either read a scripture, I should have said read a scripture. <laughs> And so much, you know, listening to what so much has been said and so much has been done on behalf of um, my sister-in-law, because that's what she always called me. Hey, sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. Sister-in-law. And, uh, you know, the first thing that came to mind, I remember when um, Alton uh, was graduating from high school and Tyrone and I had um, drove to Florida for his graduation. And we got in town, and by that, you know, back then you have the navigators and all the stuff that you have now. So, and uh, Clara, she, <laughs> Tyrone wasn't too happy because she didn't know where we were, and she couldn't give us directions and stuff. He said, Clara, I'm not gonna say, you know, back then Tyrone didn't type of words he said. <laughs> he was not very happy. He said, you've been down here, boop, boop, you know, put the beeps in the beep, beep, you know. And you know, boop, boop, beep, you know. And you don't know. <laughs> you don't know where we at. I said, big, big, big thing. <laughs> but I, and I just had to say that because I know that this is this is a hard one here. So I just had to, you know, kind of break the ice with myself because I didn't want to get up here and cry because um, I don't have I didn't have any older sisters. Uh, I was the, I'm the oldest in my family. Um, so uh, so when you run, you know, people say you don't marry your in-laws, but yes, you do. Absolutely. You do. And uh, I couldn't have handpicked a better group of people. Mm -hmm. I always said that if I could have picked my mother-in-law, I would have picked Rhody any time. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. So, I have a big sister, Valerie, where Tyrone had to kind of break that. He called her sour ma'am, sweet ma'am. Well, I might be sour to you, but I'm sweet to my husband. <laughs> like, so he kind of had the family calling us sweet ma'am and sour ma'am. That's how we had to distinguish. You know, we both was Valerie since so. then. But, uh, but with all that said, I just want to say that uh, I started out praying for Alton and Veronica and little Lily. When Sister Clara got, when she got started, when she got sick, I just had to start praying for my niece and nephew and great niece because I knew how close they were. They, I never, I had never witnessed such closeness like that. I mean, I've seen closeness, and I'm close to my mom, and, but, but the, the connection, when you see one, you see all three of them, you know, it's like, you know, Clara, Veronica, and, and Alta, you know, and, um, and I just love the spirit that her and Ricky had, even when they were you know, divorce, but they still had the connection to love. Yes, yes. And that's yes. just awesome. That's that's a that's a legacy in itself. That's 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 something to carry on right in itself because you had that. So many people don't have it. You had that. So I'm gonna do what I've been asked to do, just the words of courage, but it's just a song. There's so much I could say, but I want to be obedient, just encourage you with this song, the words of the song. I'm not going to sing because I was so encouraged, so I'm going to use the words of this particular song. But I also want to say this, that Clara, because her younger brother Tyrone, he's also been still. Yes. And he's yes. still not totally there. And he's, yes. Yes, Lord. And she would always call, check on her baby brother, my baby brother. <laughs> <laughs> So when she could get her baby brother, she'd call me. <laughs> and so, um, and she, when we talked, and when we, the last conversation we had, we said we loved each other. Yes. And so, uh, and that was just, um, that was right in December. So, um, I just wanted to say that that I, I do love my in-laws. Um, but this particular song just says, "Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister." Be blessed wherever this life leads you. Let me speak life to you. Let me encourage you. You can depend on God to see you through. You can depend on me to pray for you. I see you in the future and you look better. 
I see you walking in favor and prosperity too. Let me speak life to you. Let me encourage you. You can depend on God to see you through. You can depend on me to pray for you. And so with me saying that, I just want to encourage you that only God can fill this void. Oh, yeah. Only God. You know, we can say things and say what we feel and what we don't feel, but this is your feeling. I can't say how I feel. I know how you feel. I know what you're going through. God, he knows. He knows your every thought of being. He knows everything. And he's the one that can fill that void. So God bless you, family. I love you, uh, Alton and Veronica and, and, and Ricky and Willie, that we're even though we're in Oklahoma, we're still here for you. And whatever we can do to lighten the to help you, whether it be just words of encouragement, you know, phone call, whatever we can do. Can't say babysit because we're so far away. <laughs> but God bless you. Uh, I, I just want to say that I love you. And y'all just stay strong in the Lord because this is what's going to have to get us through being strong in the Lord because we all got to make this journey one day. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Though the storm keeps on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. Still that a hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the peace for sure, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't see And if the wind keeps on blowing, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Though the storm on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still that a hope that lies within is reassured it's reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm don't cease, and just in case, the wind keeps on blowing in my life. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. Oh, I really Sometimes in this life We're gonna have storms By the winds and the currents That seem so fierce 
but in the word of God I have an anchor and it keeps me steadfast unmovable despite the time but if the storm don't cease and just in case the wind keeps on blowing in my life my soul has been anchored in the Lord in the Lord Breakers may dash, I should not sway because he hold me fast. So dark and gray, cloud in the sky, I know it's all right, cause Jesus is not in my soul. My soul, my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul. Somebody just bless the name of the Lord. Oh, I, I didn't say just pat. I say bless the name of the Lord. Paul said that we ought to enter into his gates. I mean, David said, we ought to enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We should be thankful unto him and bless his name because the Lord is good. Is is certain. You're not guessing. The Lord is good. Even in the midst of this, the Lord is is good. Even in the midst of a pandemic, the Lord is good. Even in the midst of four years of foolishness, God is still good. And the four years are just my opinion. To this Davenport family, to the White family, to this family, and none of y'all, no, I didn't hear the other people say this, Red. Red and I are the same age. Claire and my brother Roth, who was deceased, they were the same age. <clears throat> but what they don't have on us is that we're the Huckabucks. Right. We call the Beechwood Huckabucks. <clears throat> in case you didn't know, we in here. Come on, Beechwood in the house. Beachwood is always in the house, even though we're different and we live on different streets. <clears throat> Some kind of way we had good relationships. Tyrone and I, I remember one time we had one fight. <laughs> we were back at the elementary school that we called the garden. We played basketball. I don't know what we were fighting for. <clears throat> Doesn't matter. Because as the years grew, we never remembered that fight. Amen. But we've developed a relationship like brothers. Amen. And he's my brother. And I remember Claire. So even though she was older than us, she was that quiet person. She was that person that was kind of tenderhearted and, and you never did. She didn't show out like some of us did. <clears throat> Brother Davenport there, Ray, he, him and Ray can tell you I was, a, I was a clown. But I'm a witness that God can save a clown. <clears throat> Y'all can laugh, but so are some of you. When um, I got the call, and um, first I got the call and said, <clears throat> would you sing? Then I got a call. They said, would you do the eulogy? 
<clears throat> based on what everybody said here today, immediately, I, I didn't know what nobody was going to say. Immediately, this is what God gave me. Love is the greatest. And in the terms of the young people today, a lot of people today, they call it the GOAT. The great of all time. <clears throat> Back in the day, we, we believed that Muhammad Ali was the greatest of all times. Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, even Kobe. We call those people the great of all time. I remember a commercial that some of you may not ever remember or you know. The Convert All-Star commercial. It says, you're the greatest. That's no jive. Standard equipment on the BC side. As I fly through the air with my greatest slam dunk, I'm flying for class, and that's no bomb. Convert all saw, stars, the limousines for your feet. <laughs> Red know what I'm talking about because when we were coming up, we played ball. You know, the brothers had small calves, so we, we wear a lot of socks. <laughs> <coughs> we cut the bottoms out, a lot of them, and then have some that we just push down to come up to our calves, and it made our calves look big. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about. But when you, when you live in even, uh, I'm not talking about a perfected. Love doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. Love, I heard, uh, heard Sister Williams saying that I can't, you know, be strong, but because you're crying and because you lost your best friend, crying don't mean that you are weak. It takes strong people to cry. The Bible says that Jesus wept. And who is stronger than he? There is none. 1 Corinthians 13 and 3 says, These three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. But this is the part that is very important. All the word is important, but this is significant. It says the greatest of these is love. A lot of people talk about love. We heard Tina Turner talk about it. You know, she was being abused, and she said, what love got to do with it? And I can kind of understand that if, she, if you define love the way she defined it, because what she experienced didn't seem like love to her. So it left her to a place of saying, what love got to do with it? When you love somebody, then they hurt you. What, it, what does it matter? I want to tell you today that we have to make sure that we define words. And we have to define them in the way that God defines them. Because when you look in your, def in, in, in your dictionary, it only talks about love as an emotion, feelings, and when you care for a person. If you don't remember anything, remember this. The power to define is the power to fulfill. If you can define it, you can fulfill it. If you can't define it, there's no way it's impossible for you to fulfill something that you don't understand. Whosoever confess and acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he is in God. We have come to know by personal observation and experience and have believed with deep, consistent faith the love which God has for us. Another point I'm going to leave with you is it is impossible for you. We talk, we kind of throw love out there. I used to think love was sex. What happens when you get old enough and sex don't even matter to you no more? Even brothers get headaches. <laughs> hey, I don't want to fool with me this morning or this afternoon. I'm telling you. All those things, you know, all those things would pass away. Well, you know, you have all vigor and, you know, vivacious and, and, and when, when you get older, some things don't matter anymore. There's something that matters more than sex. 
There's something that matters more than food. There's things that matter more than money and a job. There's something that matters more. We confuse it because we don't know love. And, and so we, de we deceive ourselves that we're being loved and that we're giving love and nobody experienced it. Nobody's experiencing love because we have not truly defined it. The love which God has for us is very important. You could never, ever love anyone effectively and right until you, not just you love God, because we use that, I love God, I love God. No, you, you can't effectively love anybody until you know how to receive the love of God, the love that God has for you. If you don't receive how God loves you, it's impossible for you to love people. See, so what is the love of God? God's love is unconditional. And we talk about aerial love and filial love. Those things don't even matter. It, it is one love. It is the agape love that we experience filial love and aerial love because we know the love of God. Love which God gave has for us. God is love. If you want a definition today, love is God. It is in the character of God. And the one who abides in love abides in God. It becomes evident when you understand love and you live that way. Love is not a feeling or emotion. It is a lifestyle. It is a character. No one can see God, but we know he exists. We know that he's there. And his love is so powerful. He said, I love you so much. Matter of fact, this is what scripture says in Romans. He said, in that while you were yet sinners. I'm going to tell you what true love is. See, because a lot of our love is conditional. What we have is entitlement love. We have, if you do this for me, that's elementary. We used to do it in elementary school. We would write a note to a girl and say, hey, you love me, I love you, fill in the blank. <laughs> we are still filling in blank. This is, no, we got to grow beyond filling in blank. See, because what God said is, why you were messed up, why you were a mess, why you couldn't even get it together, why you stink in my nostrils, I loved you without you doing anything for me. God's love don't need anything from anybody. That's what makes his love so powerful because his love doesn't require anything from you. Why is it that when we love somebody and we sign papers and we get married and we do all the stuff and they got to be a good cook, they got to know how to have wild sex? Oh, come on now. Come on, I know there's some freaks in the house. Y'all trying to play me. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know y'all know that chandelier stuff that you always talked about. You know, you got on the phone and talked to a young lady all night long. You ain't saying nothing. Then y'all both fall asleep. And then you wake up and say, we're in love. We're going to get married. No, you're not. You're tired. That's the only thing going to set us free is, is the truth. We fool ourselves that that love, and so we try all kind of things, trying to fulfill a spot that is only left for, that's there for God. Nobody can fill a God-sized hole in your life but God. Amen. Well, say, Pastor, well, how do we work this with people? Well, what God does is he put his spirit in people, and he calls people to come together, not because of the way they look, but because they have the same spirit. And when they have the same spirit and they get together, they experience God in the relationship. Some of you can say it right now. That I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> Say, what was I thinking? <laughs> if the truth be known and it should, most of us wasn't thinking. We was only dealing with our feelings. What made us feel good? But sometimes the thing that make you feel good make you cry, make you hurt. So what he did, he said, love is complete and perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. 
with assured boldness to face him. See, when you know God loves God and you know that you are not perfected, let me tell you something. You are never going to be perfected in this body. Oh, can I get a little bit of help? Just, you're not going to be perfected in this body. And I don't believe that God intended for you to be perfected in your body, but he wants you to be perfected in your faith toward him. But in the religious world, and the true definition for religion is insanity. Okay, I know y'all get quiet right there. <laughs> religion, when you religiously do the same thing, expecting different results, it is insane. You're losing your mind. If a woman won't long fingernails, she don't bite her nails every day. And then say, oh my God, they're going to grow. No, they're not. You have not changed anything. Your marriage can't get better until you change. Stop trying to change the person and change you. A lot of relationships are destroyed because we don't really don't understand love. Love is God. And when you have somebody that loves God, they'll know how to love you. You won't put pressure. We're putting too much pressure on one another to, to somebody to do something in your life that only God can do. Nobody can fulfill what God has put in you. You forgot that you're in the image of God. You're not in the image of Leroy and Bill and, and Mary Lou and Kathy Lou Ann. So I have to say them old ancient names because, you know, I don't know all Chiquita and when we, when we look at um, 1 Corinthians uh, 13 and 13, there's a part before that. In, in the beginning of the chapter, the chapter began to um, state what love is and what is not. How it acts, how it carries itself. How it doesn't promote selfishness. And sound like my sister was not selfish. Love is no good until you give it away. It's, it's, it's unconditional. Some of us want a, a deal instead of a covenant. You go and buy a car, there is a responsibility. You get the car. You pay them for the car. If you don't pay for the car, you lose your car. The reality is, really, it's not your car until you finish. And some of us want stuff that we ain't willing to, to, to work for and finish in order to say that we own it. Your life right now is not yours. We're bought with a price. We have a promissory note on our life. We don't even know yet the fulfillment of what God has for us until we stand before him. We stand before him. He said, we're going to take off this mortal body and put on immortality. He's going to give us a new body that will match that Holy Spirit. All glory to God. And some of you think you're going to stay up there and sit around heaven and walk all day and tell them about your trouble. Tell them how people treated you since you laid your burden down. Then you're going to try on your robe. And I ain't never understood this one. Try on your robe at the gates of hell. What you doing down there? I'm going to put on my golden slippers. This is the idea of what we think about heaven. But I believe 2 second, second Peter two, um, um, 3 and 13, I think it says, that we believe in a new heaven and new earth where dwelleth righteousness. And what I mean by that is that when we get that new body, God is a purpose for God and he put us here for a purpose. I believe that God going to put us right back down here and say, go finish the work. The only thing that's going to be different is, we got that body that's in agreement with our spirit. Help me here. Love. Look, look and then, then four and seven began to explain what love, how love works. Love is patient and kind. Have you ever seen some patient people and they're not kind? You got to do both. Some people can put on. Church folks are actors. If you, wanna, if you want some cheap actors in Hollywood, 
come to the church. Now, what am I saying? That people that go to a building that call it a church, they, they, they have not decided that they are the church. But just church goers, they're not being developed into who God wants them to be. So they entertain you. This is not Hollywood. It's not New York. It says love is patient, love is kind. Watch it, it said love is not jealous or boastful. Are proud. Yeah. Watch this one. Are rude. Yeah. I wonder how they even let some of these ushers <laughs> even work. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. They rude. Ugly. And some, um, some of them, along with some of us, speak in tongues and cuss in English. Oh, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. On Sunday morning, they can be one way. Yeah. But it's the life that you live outside of the light. Yeah. When, 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 when you're under pressure, yeah. when, when the enemy is coming in, yeah. you got to let the spirit of the Lord, like a flood, yeah. be lifted up above yeah. that life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a song that we said, love lifted me. Yeah. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. <laughs> sinking to rise no more. It was my last time. I was like olive oil. That's it. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and it wasn't the church, it wasn't the pastor, it wasn't the evangelist, it was the Lord. It goes on and explains how we should carry ourselves. It does not love, talking about love, it does not demand its own way. Let that sink in. I like the old school say, put that in your pipe and smoke it. You're smoking everything else. Then it says it's not irritable. This is the part that I love, Brother Ray. It says, it does not keep record of wrong. How many of you are still holding on to things that people have said and done? I ain't talking about last year. Some people hold it for 50 years. And some of it happened this morning. <laughs> Somebody got on your nerves. And I'm going to help you today. When people get on your nerves, put your nerves in your pocket so they can't get on them. You need to protect your own nerves. That's not nobody else's responsibility. They made me mad. They don't have the ability to make me mad. I choose to be mad. If you can choose to be mad and upset and unforgiving, how in the world that we think that we're going to survive if we have an unforgiving spirit? It, it's just like I'm drinking poison and I'm hoping you die. When you don't forgive, when you're holding unforgiveness, no, you don't have to rationalize, you don't have to fully understand it. But the Bible says in Mark 11 and 25, he said, when you stand praying, forgive. He didn't say if you feel like it, if you wanted to, if they came back and apologized. He said, stand and forgive. In my fact, Mark 11 and, 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 and 23 says that if you have faith in God, then you can say to the mountain, well, what is the mountain? Well, it's a sickness, it's a disease. No, the sum of the mountain is us. You can tell selfishness and sinnedness to move out of the way so God can be seen. So people have to see your good works and glorify them. That's the only way that they know God. Sister William said she knew God through prayer. Who know God through you? Who know God through you? A lot of us like to keep records. But I'm going to give you an opportunity today to delete your hard drive. There's things that are in your heart against people. Watch this. 
scripture says, and we, we, we pray this all the time, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You better stop praying if you ain't ready to forgive. What if God treats you the way that you treat that person? Well, you just don't know. Yeah, but God knows. He knows your filth. He knows your shortcoming. We, he know we all fail. He, he, he knows, Red, how, how we will buck wild. Don't he know it? He know it. You know it. I know it. That's a lot of knowing. And you don't have to know the details of what me and Red did. Because you got enough information on yourself. Knows itself. That it keeps no record of wrong. Watch this. Not just record of wrong of other people. Sometimes we don't know how to forgive ourselves when we're messed up. Yes. See, you got to learn to forgive yourself. You got to show yourself empathy sometimes. Yes. Quit looking in the mirror and saying something different than what God said. God says you're the righteousness of God. God said you are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. Why? Who give you the right to look in the mirror and say that you're less than who God says you are? He's the one that died for you. You didn't die for yourself. Y'all should have left me alone. Say, keep no record of wrong or being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Watch this. It says, love. See, I told you, love is God, right? It says love never fails. Yeah. You know what that's really saying? Yeah. God never God fails. fails. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Love never give up. God never gives up on you. Yeah. We shouldn't give up on one another. Jesus left here, and his message to us was love one another. Yeah. Watch this. As I have loved you. Take our time and think about how has he loved you. Does he talk about you while he's smiling in your face? Watch this. Love is not timid. And that's one thing we get wrong, too. We think love is, oh, it's going to be all right. Everything, oh, uh, you know, uh-uh. No, love, when you truly love somebody, I had to learn this in my marriage, Brother Davenport. See, I, I thought that it was love when, and, uh, when you decide, I'm not going to have this argument. I just don't feel like this. And I, you don't have to have an argument, but you've got to tell the truth. See, when you withhold truth from somebody you're in a relationship with, now I think you should choose how you say it. I think it ought to be said out of love, but, but I'm doing my wife an injustice if I don't speak the truth. And then down the road, you got to go and say, eh, I don't know if we can make it. You've got to speak the truth. Love always speaks the truth. Love chastises. It corrects, but it never kills. So I'm going to give them the truth. I, I, I want to talk to all y'all truth givers. I just want to get, I'm, 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 I'm just straightforward. Y'all know those kind of people? I'm just, I'm just straightforward. I just tell it like it is. I, 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 I just got to tell you. The way it is, because I'm not going to have a heart attack or an aneurysm fooling around with you. I'm just going to tell you like it is. But let me tell you something. Truth without grace kills. Grace without truth is worthless. You got to have both. They have to be intertwined together. If you're going to tell somebody the truth, tell them the truth. Jeremiah 29 said, I know the plan that I have for you is good and not evil to give you a future and a desired end. When you open up your mouth and release a seed out of your mouth, you better make sure it comes from God and not from your flesh. Because watch, watch this. You think that you're killing the person and getting them straight, but the seeds that you sow is going to be a harvest. Love give, never gives up love. Um, never lose faith. It always hopeful and endures through circumstances. One of the things that Paul is saying here is that when he became a man, 
when he was a child, he acted like a child. But when he became a man. So what that really means, I'm not going to go into detail because it's time for us to get out of here. But, but, but when he talks about a child, a child is not just an infant. A child is an immature person. Would you immature in what we first talked about, talking about love and how love is and what it looks like and all that? When you don't fully understand, you act like a child. You feel a sense of entitlement. If they don't say nothing to me, I ain't going to say nothing to them. And then tell me, I'm just going to be the bigger person. Y'all know what, y'all know what. It, but he said when, as a man, he understood that no longer, he no longer saw love as only gain for himself. He was the chief of condemners. He persecuted the church because he was childish. Before his conversion, that's what he did. Instead, and, and instead saw it, it was about sharing Christ's love with others. Love never fails. If we didn't if we didn't have love, it wouldn't build our faith. So that's why I talked about faith, hope, and love. In order to have faith, and I got a lot more stuff on here, but I ain't seeing it. All right, that's all right. It ain't break. Um, he said, these are two, three important things. He said, faith, hope, and love. He said, but the greatest, the goat, is love. If you don't understand, there is no faith if you don't have love. Who can you believe in if you don't love them? You cannot have hope because love is not there. But he declared that love never fails. I don't care who you are here today if you have not accepted the Lord as your Savior. He still died for you. Love never fails. Love is so powerful that it would change the heart of a man that tried to destroy the church. Love is so powerful that it can change a nation. The reason why a nation is so messed up is because there is no love. Our culture, our race, their race, their party, your party, all that has become more important than love. And so now, the enemy is deceiving us. It's not about your, um, the, way you, the way you believe politically. <coughs> Nothing would get better even with Biden in there if we don't love. But we got so many people that don't love enough, all they want is their money. If you want to find the heart of a person, trace that money. <laughs> trace that money. People will stay home. They will work all the time saying, I got to pay these bills and I want to get out of debt. But your family is crumbling. You value your family, your, your, your money over your family. Sometimes you got to say, you know what, man, I, I'm, I'm shutting this down. I'm going home. You see, don't talk about you love God and you don't spend time with God. Amen. The Bible says that Abraham, um, he, 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 knew, he knew God. Right. And not only did he know God, the Bible says that Abraham knew Sarah and, was, and went into the tent and, and she conceived. So knowing is about intimacy. You got to have intimacy. You know what intimacy means? Seeing inside of me. You, you need to see inside of the person that you're sitting next to. Yeah, they may have messed up, but do, do, do you really know? We're so busy looking at the fruit instead of the root. We define everything by, by the fruit and, and don't find out why in the world this is cropping up. Now, your fruit will identify who you are. That's why we know an apple tree is an apple tree, because there's fruit. Come on. And so then, you got to check the root. Where's the source? Where's it coming from? Where's it? Why is this person? We got so many young people so angry. Why are they so angry? And they're trying all kind of religions. Everybody got their own thing now. And then when you peel it up, what you find out is about hatred. 
all over, whether you're black, white, green, whatever you are. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't love God, you will never love people. So, now, you know why it's the goat? Because Jesus Christ was that goat for us. He was a lamb for us. And what, what does love do as I close? You know what love does? Love come down from 42 generations and has not done anything wrong and come in the midst of a people that have done all wrong. And he looks at them and says, you know what? I know you messed up and you really deserve to die. He said, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your place. Who place are you willing to take? Well, they got right out and they know I ain't raised them like that. Their parents, I'm telling you, parents are a mess. <laughs> we a mess. I found out with my son. I would be so mad with him. That boy was doing, doing stuff, and I'm like, this boy getting on my nerve. I'm going to knock him out. <laughs> High school, he did something. I dove across the bed at him. I mean, ta da da. Uh. <laughs> Your boy went out. But I, I, after a while, God showed me why I was so angry with him. He said, You're so angry with him because you see you. Yeah. That's why you're mad. And if you want to not see you, show him Jesus. And now he's in the church. Now he's on the praise team. Now my daughter is a minister. Now my youngest son is a minister. They're all mad with their own children loving their own God. We can turn this thing around. And so today, I want to say to you, love one another. Whatever gripes that you have, disagreements that you have, you can, you can disagree with people and still truly love them. Love don't mean that you're going to agree. It don't. You're two different people. Raised different ways. Have different experiences. But if we have the experience of Jesus, an encounter. So today, if you're here today and you have not had that encounter, we're not here to judge you. We're here to love you. We are the light that sit upon the hill. We are the salt of the earth. When the last time you rightly seasoned somebody's life? He said, well, you know, I got seasoned in me, so sometimes y'all too salty. Good season doesn't require a lot of it. It requires a blend. Oh, glory to God. You just got to put a sprinkle a little bit right there and, and then put, sprinkle it right there and, 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 then, and then just kind of test it. Sometimes we don't test our love that we're pouring out, that we say love. We call it, oh, I'm going to have tough love. What is that? What is tough love? If you want to have tough love, have a love that will love somebody when you know their mess. When you know they ain't lining up with God, can you still love them? They ain't coming to my house because I don't believe in that. No, they ain't going to ever come to my house. But I'm telling you right now, if they don't come to your house, they're going to go to somebody else's house. You don't have to agree, but you got to love. That wasn't a, he wasn't asking us to do that. That was a command. So I want to say to this family, God bless you. We love you. But if you don't love God and don't embrace the love that God has for you, you will never love one another. Brother Dan Post, they say she loved you, man. And I'm going to tell you something. And they say, well, yeah, they got divorced. But I heard that the love ain't changed. So y'all think because y'all got a piece of paper and your name written on it, that's going to sustain you. Because you have a ring on your finger, you walk down the, hall, the aisle and, and did all the stuff that. No, what sustains you is the sustainability of the love of God. So if you want your life to change, you have got to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. And be thankful. You know why? He loves you. Even if you don't love yourself and you think you're a mess. Oh, yeah. He loves you with an everlasting love. Yes. We're done.
Lovely thing. Oh, yeah. me. <laughs> Love lifted me. Come on. Love lifted me. Oh, well. And yes, we, we, we would like to say, as you're viewing, let's keep the family in mind. And also that um, we're doing social distancing. And um, we got to be safe. Amen?
Just as long as you're 